Better than life database management system. Forcibly end the puppet BTLs. Decking three. Gently wind down the puppets. Walk away. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get Flandry over there to gently wind them down as once he's awake. Because they seem to be incapacitated anyway for some reason. Well, I think because whatever whatever magical blast that the mage used on on Johnny Five, I think it like had some backlash on them as well. Oh, he's not dead. Seven hit. Okay. Oh, he missed me. He missed me with whatever that was supposed to be. Oh shit! I still only have one AP. Yeah, they're still, they're still, yeah, they're still, nighty night. Just <laughs> point, point blank rage, range, just shotgun blast right to the back, back of the head. <laughs> oh we, oh no. Uh. <laughs> There we go. Cover me! Ah. Yeah, the enemies are dead. Battle's not over because these guys are still, you know... Okay, now I'm back to, to my, my, my full AP. Alright. Oh, I don't... I thought I had decking... I, I'm an idiot! I thought I had decking three. Oh no, I was planning on taking three, maybe, and... This is... You've got the points, don't you? You can't use them in the... No, I only have decking two. Uh. I am such an idiot! Oh wait, don't, don't, don't walk away, no! <laughs> oh, luckily, it only... It doesn't cost more IP to use it again. That's just... All right, forcibly end the puppet BTLs. They won't attack us anymore. Five damage. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so if they're badly hurt, you can't actually kill them by bringing them down too abruptly, but luckily. Hmm. Alright, objective complete. Do not let any chipheads... Optional objective, do not let any chipheads die. Alright. Geno. Ooh, two more. Oh, he has seen better days. You eject the BTL Geno's been riding. He gasps suddenly and his eyes flutter open. He looks confused. Worse than the other chipheads you've seen. His lips are white and chapped. His eyes sunk into his head. There's vomit on his shirt and sweat on his forehead. When he speaks, or his words are slurred. He's burnt. What? What the hell? Who slotted me out? Who fragging slotted me out? Coyote is shaking. She looks horrified. Gino, it's me. It's Carla. Gino looks at her with glazed eyes. No comprehension. No recognition. Stick me back! Slot me back in, goddammit! This is bullshit! I don't want to be here anymore. Slot me back in. He looks around the room, angrily. His hand reaches for his implant. Coyote grabs his wrist, stops him. Gino, no. Coyote, be careful. Gino wrenches his wrists, wrenches his wrists from Coyote's grasp, and he staggers back. Reaches under his shirt and pulls out a gun. Coyote watches him, horrified, with tears in her eyes. Gino waves it around, blinking wildly. Back off. Just back the hell off. Okay. Take it easy, Gino. We're backing off. Your brain bur your brain burnt kid. You've got to get off the chips now. Or drop the gun, Gino. Take it easy, Gino. We're backing off. Yeah, probably not best to aggravate him. Yeah. He presses his hand to the sides of his head. His finger's still on the trigger. Squints. What the hell is wrong with you people? Coyote, we're trying to help you. Your virtual reality hurts, Gino. This is hurts hurting us, Gino. This is an intervention. This is the way you help me? Look at this place! Look at me! He looks around at the squalor of the room, then glimpses his own reflection in the machinery. Oh god, look at me. Put the gun down, Gino. Come with us. There are drugs that can help you, Gino. We can go slow. Or, those chips aren't reality, Gino. Come with us. Say the drugs that can help you. We can go slow. Maybe, maybe, the, maybe if we can entice him with other lesser drugs that'll call him less damaging drugs. He looks at Coyote, looks at you. We'll... we'll... go slow. He drops the gun and Paco quickly scoops it up. Coyote grabs him fiercely. 
He slumps into her arms and she rocks with him for a long time, her head buried in his shoulder. When she looks up, she locks eyes with you, the deepest gratitude reflecting on her face. I wasn't sure if that was going to work. Because I... If you don't choose those two dialogue options, he tries to shoot he tries to shoot Coyote and she has to shoot him first. And needless to say, it takes a hell of a toll on her that she's forced forced to kill the very cousin she came here trying to rescue. So, like I said, without the certain specific specific dialogue options, that's the if you do if you get the I wasn't sure which ones they were. I knew it had to be very specific. And luckily, it looks like I got the ones that actually let you save him. So that's good. We're done here. I'm done. I don't need to step foot in one of these places ever again. All right, we say we, we actually saved Gino this time. Nice. Is there bonus karma for it? I'm not sure. And it's also possible you might get benefits later, like I don't know, maybe like she'll like because later on you can actually hire her for runs. Maybe she'll charge less or something. Who knows? Looking for trouble. Virtue is its own reward, Nick. Shannon's plan is the best lead you've got to find out more about the Ripper. But getting back into the warehouse is going to require some support, in case the Drek hits the fan. The Seamstress Union will have exactly what you need. A fixer. Finding this necessary middleman and deal broker is the key to most plans involving Shadowrunners. A good fixer is worth the Nuyen. It's their job to have the contacts and know-how, know who's good at what. They'll put together the team you need. Magical support. Skilled street samurai for muscle, or a Nova Hot Decker for matrix work. Running the shadows is a life and death gamble. It pays to hire the best shadow runners you can. All right. John Bartlett. Oh, there's Van Grat. Oh, Cherry Bomb. Cherry Bomb flags you down as you walk through the door. Hey, Flandry, there's a woman looking for you. Jessica something. Hey, all right. She's looking for you by the stage. Bellevue type. Wouldn't order anything. Won't touch anything. I think she's afraid of diseases or something. Can you really blame her? <laughs> Thanks, Cherry. No charge, Shimmer. Why is the bar so empty? We don't get much action in the early afternoon. Just a few salarymen slumming Touristville and hoping to talk to Madame Sinful and some die-hard regulars. Madame Sinful? That's what downtown folks call Mrs. Kubota. It's a Touristville thing. They'd like her to have a naughty name like that. Who's around? I just got in, but I think Coyote's cleaning the back bar. Mr. Delilah's hanging out in his usual place. The vendors downstairs came in a few minutes after me. Oh, and Bartlett's here. Don't think you've met him yet. Who's Bartlett? John Bartlett. Big presence into the end of the bar. He's in the biz. Connected. You might want to meet him. Is that guy still bothering you? You mean my ex? Shane? No, he hasn't been in since the last time either. No calls or pages or handwritten notes either. Weird. He was so persistent. I guess he finally got the message. Maybe he'll find someone at that Universal Brotherhood of his and settle down. Now, we've, we've encountered the Universal Brotherhood before briefly. That's a name that m may be familiar to people who are familiar with the Shadow, other Shadowrun backstory. It's kind of a spoiler as to why, so I won't say. I'm going to have a look around. Have fun. Alrighty. Van Gret. Remember that inf that that info that suspicious info we got? Yeah. Van Gret. I'm very busy. You show me something worth my time, or you walk away. Data from the NTSB. Ren Reiku would pay to keep it quiet, and Ares would pay to know what it is. I've got eight hundred million for something like that. Deal or ooh, etiquette. Shadowrunner. I know you'll double dip on this one. Make it a thousand. As long as you keep bringing in stuff like this, sure. <laughs> I like the fast talking boys on him. It works. <laughs> I should just make I should just make all characters in all games talk like that from now on. <laughs> if I don't do the fast talking voice, I'm afraid like I'll lapse back into my Edward G. Robinson impression or something. John Bartlett. Full of life with a quick smile. The man tilts his head and watches you approach. Hey guy, what's shaking? Little of this, little of that. I hear that, oh my. I might have something for you if you got the new yen. Time is money, I'm listening, or don't got time or money, chummer. Maybe next time. Time is money, I'm listening. You ever hear of the Nephilim Network? Of course you have. And in the no guy like you has to have heard of the premier team out, Merc team out there. Of course I have. Then you, then you know you can hire help 
Hire us to run with you when you need expert help. Not just any tube calling himself a runner. We cost more, but we're worth it. Yeah, Nephilim Network are like, when you're, when you're hiring, you know, runners for jobs, you can hire, like, locals from uh, Mr. Delilah, or you can contact the Nephilim Network and bring in some guys. Some of, some of which are, like, more, have, like, more skills or abilities that, that are harder to get from, like, the regular shadow runners. Uh, Jessica Watts. Yeah, so we've been looking for her for quite a while. At a glance, you can tell that Sam's sister Jessica is from a different world. The opposite of Sam in almost every way. Her suit is, is she tailored. a high collar too? Um, yes, she is. She's some sort of Transylvanian count, perhaps. Countess. The opposite of Sam in almost every way. Her suit is tailored, her eyes are sharp, and her style exu exudes authority. Ms. Watts? Jessica Watts? Jessica. She eyes you up and down warily. She does a good job of hiding it, but it is clear that she is well outside of her comfort zone. Yes, and you are? Flandry, I'm looking into your brother's death. Name's Flandry, I used to work with your brother Sam, or... My friends call me Flandry, and I counted Sam among them. Let's see here. Oh, let's do the top one. I'm looking into your brother Sam's death. I was told as much on the phone. A woman who called herself Coyote contacted me this morning to inform me that my brother was dead that I should come to this place and speak to someone about an investigation. That would be weird if your first notification f that, like, a, a close relative was dead was someone just named- someone calling themselves Coyote. I'm very sorry for your loss. Thank you. I appreciate you coming all this way. I'm guessing the Barons isn't what you're used to. I must admit, it isn't. None of this is. She then furrows her brow regarding you more critically. You're not with the police, are you? She looks like a vampire. Yeah. I never drink soy calf. Oh, 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 oh. You're not with the police, are you? Getting that a lot lately, but no. By the look on her face, she's clearly struggling with this. I'll be honest. I would just as soon put all this behind me, and the fastest way to do that is through proper channels. Surely there's an official police investigation going on. Why not let the professionals handle this? I am a professional. Profe Lone Star, professional, not the ones I've seen, or think they can use all the help they can get. Lone Star, professional. But you must have better things to do than waste your time searching for whatever, whoever, whatever lowlife killed my brother. Wh forever killed my lowlife brother. First, Sam was my friend, and second, I'm being paid for my trouble. She seems genuinely surprised. Someone's paying you? I find it hard to believe that anyone who really knew Sam would put up the money. Who is it? Sam, he hired me from beyond the grave. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't expect you to, it is what it is. <laughs> he set it all up before his death. It's a contingency. I do believe that my drunken sot of a brother hired you to find the person who killed him after he died. Her bird room mask drops momentarily, and in a sigh, she reveals a brief glimpse of real emotion. I left Seattle to get away from Sam and his bullshit. Now I'm back, he's dead, and I still have to deal with him. Jessica composes herself, and in a breath, the mask is back in place. Listen to me, Flandry. You seem like a decent person, but I'm trying to move on with my life. Our mother killed herself last year, and Sam... Well, Sam was Sam. You know? I've worked so hard to put my family issues behind me. I don't want to see this drag on. I would love nothing more than to give you closure, and quickly. I appreciate that, but... I think I prefer to just let it be. No one else needs to get hurt. Sam's paying a hundred thousand, can you beat it? <laughs> On the streets, honor still means something. I'm sticking with the job. You can't- I don't care if you use your vampiric powers against me. Honor? How about honoring the wishes of the living instead of the dead? Although, she's undead, apparently. So. There. She sighs. She's done. Never mind. I can see that you are not going to let this go, and I respect that you are honoring my brother's memory in your own way. But I hope you can understand how emotional this is for me. Jessica's demeanor instantly changes, from reluctant to helpful in the span of a single meditative breath. Maybe you can do things in a way that the police can't. Maybe I can help. What do you need from me? Alright. When was the last time you saw or spoke to Sam? 
It's been ages. I can't even remember. Nothing. Not even. There was a note on Sam's body. It sounded like an apology. An officer to meet up and bury the hatchet. It was signed, Jessica. I wrote many such notices in the beginning. But I haven't made such an effort in a long time. I don't know why he would have kept it. Hmm. Does Sam have any enemies? Sam's biggest enemy was Sam. I don't know any of I don't know of any others. You would likely know better than me these days. 